Concentration practice involves work. We think of it as a place for the mind to rest. And it is, but it's more a place for the mind to recharge its batteries, and that requires energy, requires effort, requires work. In Thailand, the, the idiom for meditation is to make an effort. And they're very definitely things we have to do. It's not just a letting go of our attention, a letting go of the stresses of daily life. <clears throat> but there's also work that needs to be done in order to keep it mindfulness continuous, to keep your alertness continuous, and all around. It keeps things spinning around right in here, not going out like a generator. <clears throat> the generator spins around in place and creates electric power. That being used for all kinds of purposes. But if the generator simply sits still, it can't do anything. There has to be some activity. And it's the same with concentration. The two causes for the mind to get a sense of ease and well-being are directed thought and evaluation. You have to keep directing your thought to the breath. Keep evaluating it. Notice when it's comfortable, notice when it's not comfortable. And then singleness of preoccupation, trying to keep the mind one with its object. All of this takes effort, and sometimes people will sit in meditation, put a lot of effort into it, and at the end of the period they say, well, meditation didn't get any results. It was just constant effort. It's, it's a normal part of practicing concentration that it takes effort before it starts giving results. And the effort isn't wasted. Over time you begin to get a sense of how much effort is too much, how much is too little. And the results start appearing. So that as you're doing the work, the, the payment comes. In other words, you don't have to wait till the end of the year before you get your paycheck. You get installments all along the way. So as we're doing your meditation work, keep this in mind that it is work. But as you get more precise at it, more subtle at it, then the results will start to appear. John Lee has a passage where he talks about concentration work being basically directed thought, evaluation, singleness, and preoccupation. These three activities spinning around in one place. And they're going to get results when you start being very precise about doing, doing them. In other words, you keep reminding yourself to stay with the breath. If you notice that it's wandering off, you immediately get back. Try to get so that you can sense the, when the mind is ready to go, even before it actually goes. That, that way you can nip the distractions in the bud. And try to be as alert as possible to how the breathing feels. Try to make it feel good. In other words, to make the work something you can keep on doing. You want to feel good in the work. Sit here. Feels good breathing in, feels good breathing out. So much of the body is starved for breathing energy, so give it a chance to get some of that energy. Think of it going to the different parts of the body. This breath you go for the lungs, next breath you go for the stomach, next breath you go for the legs, whatever, until you've got the whole body nourished. And if it feels good, do it again. Next time around, you try to be even more perceptive as to what's going on. As for singleness of preoccupation, you want to make sure the mind doesn't lose itself, doesn't start wandering off in other directions, start getting distracted. You want to watch out for the hindrances. Because these are the things that drain the energy, even though we may be generating a lot of power here. If the hindrances get in the way, and everything gets drained away. Like the electric system here, what Mehta, there was one year when we, when we were first setting up the batteries. We just put them on a couple of boards on the ground. Well, sure enough, a rainstorm came. 
one of the wires shorted, and the next day the batteries were totally dead. Even though the solar panels were pumping energy and the batteries were dead, you couldn't revive them. And same way with the meditation. You keep, if you keep focusing on the breath, but then allowing the mind to go wandering off in other directions, all the power, all the recharging in your batteries just gets drained away. So you've got to be careful that while you're here, you're not going to think about anything else. Even if thoughts of other things do come, you don't want to have to get you don't want to get involved in them. Just let them go, let them go. Part of the problem is you get curious. What's this thought about? What's that thought about? Maybe it's something important, maybe it's something entertaining. Watch out for those attitudes. Because that's like opening the door for thieves to come into your house. It's like scraping away the insulation on your wires. As soon as a thought that's not related to the breath comes into the mind, just let it go. And in fact, there are certain ways of thinking about the breath or thinking about the meditation that actually get in the way of the meditation. So you've got to get, watch out for them, too. The big troublemakers are restlessness and anxiety. Restlessness is wanting to push for results before the mind is really ready to give them. Trying to figure out things beforehand, before you've actually done the concentration work. You've got to do the work first, and things will develop on their own. Now John Lee gives the example of smelting and getting gold ore out of a rock. You can't go and just take a pick and pick out the gold. You've got to subject the rock to heat. It takes time before you get to the point where the gold melts, and then it'll come out on its own. In other words, when your powers of concentration are strong enough, then when they reach the point where they're ready, and the work of discernment gets a lot easier. Things separate out for, them, for you right before your very eyes. You don't have to do an awful lot of analysis. Simply get the mind concentrated long enough and solidly enough and pose a question in the mind, and things will be there very clearly, because you've created the environment in which they can appear clearly, because the mind is still and it's solid. As for anxiety, this is a habit that we pick up in the world, and one of the ways we can work with it in the meditation is to work with it not only in the meditation, but also in daily life. One of the standards, standard definitions of anxiety is concern about what other people think. What's this person going to think? What, that's, what is that person going to think? If I do what I know is right, but it offends people, how, what am I going to do? Do I dare do it? That kind of thought really gets in the way. And if you let yourself wallow in those thoughts or get led astray by those thoughts in daily life, it's very hard not to get led astray while you're meditating. One of the things I really appreciated about John Fuhrman was he really didn't care what other people thought. If he knew what he was doing was right, then even if it was unpopular, he went ahead with it. Because he realized, on the one hand, there's no way you can control other people's attitudes towards you. If they want to think ill of you, well, that's their right. And ultimately, where does popularity get you? Not very far. It certainly doesn't get you very far on the path. And I also noticed he really didn't trust people who were concerned about being popular. There's an interesting exchange one time when he was going to appoint one of the merchants in town to be the treasurer for the temple. The first question he asked him, though, was, in your future life, would you rather be popular or wealthy? And the man said, wealthy. His reason being that if you're wealthy, you can buy popularity. <laughs> but John Fung liked the idea that he wasn't all kind of that concerned about being popular. If the treasurer was concerned about being popular, you couldn't trust him. You might be afraid to do the right thing when push came to shove. And certain people wanted to get their hands on the temple funds. So it's important to keep this attitude in mind that when you know something is right, don't worry about whether it's popular. Don't let yourself be swayed by public opinion. But of course, this means that you have to be very careful about what you know, what you see is right. In other words, you are swayed by advice from wise people, people you respect, but people in general whose opinions don't have any any real principles. You don't have to worry about that.
because no matter what they can do to you, they can't touch the most important part of you, which is your own sense of inner integrity. It's in this way that the practice requires courage. And belief in the principle of karma requires that you make a commitment that you're not going to hedge your bets. You're going to depend totally on the skillfulness of your own actions as you can develop it. That's the principle you're going to work on. As for other principles or lack of principles, you could let them go. And sometimes this is scary. You're so used to hedging your bets by, well, at least you're popular, or at least this is taken care of, or at least that's taken care of. In case the principle of karma doesn't work out, you've got something else to fall back on. But to be really committed to that principle, to get the best results out of it, you have to be committed. And really, to be committed requires an act of commitment. Which is why in the forest tradition so much emphasis is placed on the, on the virtue of courage. Not foolhardiness, but courage. And it does take a certain amount of courage to keep the mind centered and still. Because otherwise we're always trying to plan ahead, second-guess things, anticipate things. But for the mind to have really strong powers of concentration, you have to basically tell yourself, I don't care. I'm going to focus on doing what needs to be done right now, and I'm not going to try to provide for alternative things to fall back on. In other words, when the time comes to be focused and concentrated, that's all you do. Give yourself to it totally. Have a sense of conviction, have a sense of confidence in the practice. And don't try to second-guess things. When the concentration is developed to a proper level, it'll start showing its results on its own. In other words, like that simile I often use about the, the unripe mango. You don't keep the yellow paint on, just on hand just in case to make the mango nice and yellow. You're convinced that it, if the mango is going to be yellow, it's because you pour water on the roots and you fertilize the roots of the tree. And that's all you focus on. And you don't worry about when it's going to get yellow. You realize that if you stick with it long enough, it's going to have to happen. That's all you have to do. When you have this kind of single-mindedness, then concentration does get more and more powerful, and you really do find that it recharges you. Because it's not just relaxation, is it? There's a commitment. There's an element of applied energy. At the same time that you're making sure that nothing is draining your battery away. And that way you find you get more and more strength from the concentration. So when the time lead, comes to Leave the concentration, even though it involves some work you find, you feel refreshed, you feel energized. Not simply because you've been able to let go of patterns of tension in the body, but because as breath energy, the different channels of breath energy in the body connect up, they reinforce one another. At the same time, the mind gets reinforced. Its good qualities get reinforced and strengthened. They're allowed to feed on one another. This is how the work of concentration starts showing its results. A sense of well-being, a sense of inner strength, a sense of being energized. Concentration, after all, is one of the five strengths. And if our discernment is going to have the strength that needs to penetrate our, all the veils of delusion we've put up in the mind. It's going to require good, strong concentration, good, committed concentration. To do the work that leads to release. 